welcome again to midweek prayer. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And Psalm 93. The Lord is King. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters. Mightier than, their break, than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting for me to keep fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. A prayer. Lord God, may we be the ones who see as you see things. 
so that we may be inspired by you and live faithfully in your service for your praise and glory. Amen. Today we celebrate Christ the King, focusing on the king, kingship of Jesus. And I'm fascinated by our gospel reading. Jesus is before Pilate, who is the most powerful person in the area. And yet Jesus is so calm and cool with him. Um, sort of gently sort of challenging him about why he's saying things, very much in command. Um, I don't know about you, but with sort of powerful, important people, I don't think I come over very well. Uh, I get a bit sort of uh, jittery. But Jesus is clear. He says, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So, this kingdom, so difficult to define, I, I often say that it helps me to say that the kingdom of God is actually a way of seeing things. And I've been wondering how to sort of conceive of the kingdom. And I have no idea whether this is helpful or not, or it even makes sense. But uh, I, I'm sort of thinking about the kingdom of God as a sort of fifth dimension. Now, that might seem a bit sort of um, complicated, but I, I think it isn't really. We, we live in four dimensions. There are three spatial dimensions, up, down, side to side, forward, back. And that defines any movement. Uh, those three three dimensions and then there's the dis dimension of time which isn't anything like up down side to side or forward back it's it's completely different um, different dimension I was going to say well it, it is it is a different dimension uh, it goes in a different way everything is carried along on time so if the kingdom of God was a fifth dimension, it's sort of there around us, but obviously lots of people are not really aware of that dimension of God. I think more people are than they like to than like to admit it. That somehow something more than this world is important to them, more than we can see in, in different ways. I think people, yeah, I mean, science is brilliant for understanding things, but it has its limitations. Uh, there is somehow more to life. So lots of people would call themselves spiritual. And I think that's to do with the fifth dimension, even if they wouldn't want to be associated with any particular organised religion. So what if, what if the kingdom of God is fifth dimension. There's, there's a, this other dimension which has a pull on us. We feel the pull of this other dimension and we're quite aware of this other dimension when maybe other people are less aware, not unaware I suspect, but maybe less aware. So they may find it odd that we feel that pull uh, when perhaps they don't so much. But don't neglect this unseen dimension. When we're surrounded by the four dimensions and all that goes on in them, we can sort of be 
uh, drawn into thinking, oh, well, the fifth dimension isn't that important when it is, because it is this dimension of a relationship with God and all that that opens up to us that will inspire us in what we do to make, well, in global terms, the world a better place in all sorts of things. And I'm sure you're doing something in one way or another to, to make the world a better place. But it's actually very hard to do that. And we need the help of this fifth dimension to somehow focus us aright, to set our hearts aright, to help us from being tripped up by the things which so often get in the way when we will want to do something good for others but stuff gets in the way. Don't neglect that fifth dimension. Don't neglect those things that Jesus talks of. He's being enigmatic with, with Pilate. He's enigmatic with lots of us. He tells parables that are really to make us think, to develop a way of seeing, seeing in the fifth dimension. So I hope you can find ways of staying in touch so that you can be empowered and inspired to serve God, to forward his kingdom, to make his kingdom known, to make his kingdom real by making this world a better place. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer now. And as we pray, let's just ponder whether that idea of a, a fifth dimension helps us to understand where God's kingdom fits in. To understand the pull that it has on our lives and the inspiration that it can be. So let's ask God now to show us how we can develop our awareness of that dimension the unseen real that we can connect with. Just allow God to take you to the things that bring you inspiration, that enliven your relationship with God. Don't worry if they seem unexpected or uh, a bit different. Just think how you can include those in your day. Jesus, you said that your kingdom is not of this world. Yet your kingdom was very real to you and has been real to all your followers down the, the ages and the centuries. Give us grace to be kingdom people. For your praise and glory. Amen. Jesus,
so we pray. Come to your church's King, the King of love. We pray for all who struggle to know that they are loved. We hold before you now those we know who need a reassurance of love. Help each of us to live in the light of your love and to share that love in our lives. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be, be done. done. Come to your world as King of the Nations. We pray for those in authority in all the troubled places in the news. We name before you now those places that we are concerned for. We pray too for each nation that all will make a positive response to the climate crisis. We pray for those without a voice who are affected every day by the effects of climate change. Your kingdom come. Your, Your will, will be done. done. Come to the suffering as saviour and comforter. We ask that you will hold in your care those who are not well, praying for those struggling in whatever way. Bring them comfort, healing, hope and peace. Your kingdom come. Your, your will, will be, be done. done. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. We pray for those whom we have lost and loved. We pray for those recent... So we remember all those we have loved and lost. And we pray for those recently bereaved. We pray for those who are alone. Your kingdom come. Your, Your will, will be, be done. done. Amen. Amen. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Gracious and Holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I give you all the honor and praise that's due your name, for you are the King of glory, the creator of all things, and I worship you. I give my life to you, I fall down on my knees, yes I worship you, I give my life to you, I fall As 
your spirit moves upon me now you meet my deepest need and i lift my hands up to your throne your mercy i've received and i worship you i give my life to you i fall down on my knees yes i worship you i give my life to you i fall down on my knees you have broken chains that bound me you've set this captive free i will lift my voice to praise your name for all eternity and i worship you i give my life to you i fall I worship you, I give my life to you, I fall down on my knees, I worship you. serve him faithfully. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And thanks for joining us. <laughs>